Welcome to Open Infra TV India. I am Ashok Kumar and I'll be your host. Join me as we recap the Open Infrastructure Summit Day 1 keynotes and stick around for a sneak peek of tomorrow's keynotes. Don't forget, you can also watch the full keynotes on demand through the event platform at summit.openinfra.dev. This week, you will have the opportunity to meet fellow community members from 110 different countries. Make sure you take time to interact in session chats, visit the Open Infra Marketplace, and share your experiences with hashtag Open Infra Summit. This is uh, the 10th anniversary of OpenStack. We just had the 22nd OpenStack release. And this year we've been thinking, um, you know, really how did all of this get started? And if we go back to the beginning, how this started was about an idea. This all started with an idea that there should be open source infrastructure as a service software as we enter this period of time where more than ever, we all depend on digital infrastructure for the things that are, uh, are important in our lives. And that is a thing that I think um, at the time was a big idea, but we had a very small group that was starting that out. We had about 25 people um, that really formed up what, uh, what, what started back then. And uh, it was about 20,000 lines of code, so almost no software at all. And over time, we had hundreds of community members who joined in, and then it was thousands and then tens of thousands. And together, what we all did is we added more capabilities into more OpenStack projects. And then across the open source ecosystem, we saw projects like Cloud Foundry that, that uh, started up. We saw Ceph, Open vSwitch. Now we have Kubernetes. And, uh, and this whole idea of open source infrastructure has become more relevant than ever today. And what's incredible when you think about what's happening right now, there's just more and more being created. I mean, I would be surprised if this week we see new ideas turn into new communities and start writing new software. And we really believe in creating communities that write software to run in production. And one of the things that we're so excited about is some of the new companies that are actually getting involved right now. In fact, just in the past week, our board of directors met and we had four new companies that applied to become platinum members and were accepted at that board meeting for, for next year. And that's never happened before in a single year, let alone in a single board meeting. And that's just incredible. We had companies like Ant Group, who has a, the Alipay platform, which is we'll be hearing more about later today from one of their engineers. We had Facebook uh, Connectivity. We had Fiber Home and Wind River. So that really puts us on an amazing course. And these are the companies that believe in this community-led, open source, community-building software uh, approach. So like Mark said, now we have, uh, we have new communities. We have new companies. We have uh, new technologies. And I think that uh, this is a really exciting time. And one of the things that we are super happy to be able to announce today is that we are announcing the Open Infrastructure Foundation as the successor to the OpenStack Foundation. Cheers. Cheers. Come yeah. pie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, is, this is exciting. This yeah. is really great news. And it's something that I think uh, you know, represents where we have gotten to as our community. Yeah. And, uh, we are open in front. <laughs> the theme of the 21st Summit keynote is uh, the next decade of open infrastructure. The OpenStack Foundation kicked off the summit by sharing that the OSF has taken next step in its ongoing evolution to build open source communities that write infrastructure software in production by becoming the Open Infrastructure Foundation. Check out the announcement and be sure to visit openinfra.dap slash join to learn how to contribute to the global community. What do you all think, Indian OpenStack user group? Thus, there is a need to rethink the way we build and offer connectivity solutions. As we rethink how networks should be built, we realize that there is significant vision alignment between the OIF and Magma community around connectivity. Connectivity is this phenomenal mandate to take on as a community of people who care about the impact of technology on every human. 
This is also why I'm personally so excited about this collaboration. Over the last year, we have been working with the OIF community in moving Magma from a Facebook incubated project to more of a community-led software development project. Without further ado, what is Magma? A good way to think about it is to start by thinking about the problem statement around the network. A network in rural Brazil looks the same as a network in downtown San Francisco, a one size fits all model. The problem though of connecting the next billion users to a higher quality internet is a problem of heterogeneity. Heterogeneity in access technology, Wi-Fi, 5G, LTE, depending on how the user is accessing the internet. Heterogeneity in scale, is it a two-site deployment in the Amazon jungle or a 200-site deployment in a peri-urban area? And heterogeneity in a business model. So a solution that addresses this need needs to allow for all access technologies, LTE, Wi-Fi, and 5G, support scale-out architectures that were popularized by web scale companies for different size of deployments, and allow for customization through permissive licenses and extensible APIs to enable new and novel business cases. Tying all of this together into something concrete, release 1.3 is available now and supports fixed wireless, carrier Wi-Fi, and private LTE use cases. With all the different open source projects in our community, we want to encourage you all to join and start contributing. Victoria Martinich de la Cruz discussed her personal journey in joining the OpenStack community as a non-native English speaker living in South America and has since grown to be a core contributor to the community and has championed the outreach program, bringing in new contributors from all over the world. Are you, are you afraid of speaking up because of a language barrier? Please don't worry about that. We are a global community. And because of that, uh, we know how to make a comfortable environment for you to speak up. Um, for instance, uh, you see the picture on the screen. In this, this picture was from last opening for summit in Shanghai. Uh, for that session, uh, we set up a board in which we started making annotations of the different uh, changes that we need to do. And if we couldn't communicate things verbally, uh, we will take those annotations and, and pass them through a software translator and make sure that every single contributor on that room were on the same page. So uh, in a virtual environment, that is going to be even easier. But if not, uh, definitely we have ways for us to make sure that we uh, communicate dynamically. So don't worry and speak up. Uh, and if anything come up that make you feel uncomfortable, uh, you can reach a lot of people in the community. In the next segment, Theory Carries defined what open infrastructure is and how cloud native applications require programmable infrastructure. And open infrastructure provides a solution for those. He really emphasized that those technologies were complementary, not competitive. 20 years ago, you would procure some physical hardware and as an application deployer, you would install an operating system, your dependencies and your applications directly on top of that. Then we started to add more abstractions, more layers. We added hardware virtualization abstracting the server you're deploying on from the physical hardware that runs it. Then we added cloud APIs to allow to programmatically access those virtualized resources. So you have programmable infrastructure on one side and cloud native applications being deployed on top of that. More recently, we added a new layer, um, application deployment APIs. That is what Kubernetes provides, higher level of primitives to deploy complex applications on top of this programmable infrastructure. So you get the idea here. There is a growing new role of providing infrastructure for application deployers to deploy on. And that is the population that we care about when we talk about open infrastructure. 
giving that population open source solutions for providing infrastructure. And the solution is not one project hosted by one foundation. You have to mix a lot of ingredients, lots of building blocks to build a solution that is customized to your needs. To facilitate that, we need to collaborate without boundaries to integrate various solutions to test that all things work well together. The two open source infrastructure projects that provided updates today were OpenStack and Kata containers, both of which just celebrated releases. The 22nd OpenStack release, Victoria, was made available last week, and Kata containers 2.0 was made available earlier this month. Congratulations to both communities. Did you know that 15 million cores of OpenStack are deployed around the world? In their keynote, Workday talks about how their deployment has grown to 400,000 cores. Then Alibaba and Group talks about the features in Kata 2.0 and how they run it in production. We are using OpenStack to deploy applications and running microservices at Workday. It allows developers to build ones and deploy their applications across all the data centers in a very consistent manner. Uh, we are experiencing a good rapid growth at Workday of our OpenStack deployments. One of the primary reasons is the Workday's business growth itself. Uh, as we are getting new customers, we need to grow our platform where we are running this uh, at our applications. And also another driver is moving legacy applications to a virtualized platform. Our current deployment of OpenStack, we are running on five different data centers. We have 45 uh, running clusters, 39,000 something uh, VM and 422,000 cores. In 2018, they announced Kata containers 1.0 in Vancouver. After that, they kept improve, improving the Kata containers and contribute to related communities. And we have released 12 1.0 stable releases in the past two years. Today, we are proud to announce the release of 2.0 Kata. Lightweight is a feature of the Kata. In 2.0, one of the major improvements is to reduce the sandboxing overhead. By rewriting the Kata agent with Rust language and employing PTRPC instead of the GRPC for the agent protocol, the Kata agents have already changed the memory consumption from 11 megabytes to 400 or 300 kilobytes. That's about 140 of the 1,000 X. Wrap up the day of one, key, of one keynote highlight content. Here's a sneak peek of what you can expect from tomorrow keynotes. Airing in about 12 hours, where we will discuss the innovation driving the next decade of open infrastructure. So why are we using Zoom? Well, one of our developers said this in a really good way. And he believes that premium cars need premium tools and Zoom is a premium tool. And it forces us to have a green master, and in that way, we uh, increase our development speed. Uh, for example, the one pedal drive of Polestar 2 was built with Zoom. Zoom version 3, uh, why do we use that? Well, to handle development in an NVIDIA central computer, where there are many teams with different Garrets, and we have the introduction of cloud nodes, we really need Zoom version 3. And here we rely on cross project dependencies, which is a feature of Zoom. And as mentioned many times before, the most important feature of Zool is the gating system. Do not merge broken code. We believe that if open source clouds are going to be successful in the long run, the open source community needs its own cloud. In 2018, we reached out to the OpenStack Foundation to explore our idea, and we thought we were going to piss them off. But Mark and Jonathan said, yes, finally. And together, we launched Open InfoLabs. We got together in real life to talk and plan, 
We had concrete goals and great clarity on our MVP. And I'm not kidding here. This is a card we wrote that day. It's really hard to argue with avoid doom as an MVP. Our goal is to create a federated large scale cloud starting with academia. A lot has happened in the wonderful world of OpenStack since our last Open Infrastructure Summit a year ago. Two software releases, in fact, the Ushuri and Victoria releases. As Dawson mentioned, Ushuri saw a lot of growth in new areas of technology, particularly around encryption and security. In the most recent release, Victoria, Ironic saw an over 60% increase in activity and landed changes focused on reducing the footprint of its standalone service and supporting more systems at the edge. There was also a focus on hardware enablement, and with that came more support and more ways of interacting with FPGAs, which is an area that we expect to continue to grow in the Wallaby release in April. There's always more work to be done, and we always welcome more contributors. Tune in tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. to watch live. And don't forget that all the summit content is available to watch on demand. And the open infra marketplace is open all day. And don't forget, join the global open infrastructure community at openinfra.dev slash join. Have a great summit.